Hi, and welcome to this session, uh, the closing session, actually, of the first international symposium on quantum computing and musical creativity. Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating something that I created over the last couple of years called Quantum Music Playground. And these slides, by the way, you can get at them at this link and follow along if you like. And also there's a tutorial for Quantum Music Playground that's at this link down below. Now, what this is, is actually a, a playground for composing quantum music using quantum states. And it's implemented as a Max for Live device in Ableton Live 11. And I built in uh, to it a quantum simulator, a micro Kizkit quantum simulator. And it's free and open source uh, licensed uh, at Apache 2.0. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, my name is James Weaver. I'm a IBM quantum developer advocate. I'm also a Java champion. I kind of uh, am both a classical and a quantum developer. I've developed uh, lots of classical applications over my over my uh, the years as a developer and uh, more recently uh, developing quantum applications. I'm also an author and a speaker. Here's uh, my email address. You could reach out anytime. I've written several books, mostly on classical computing, Java, Java FX, Raspberry Pi. Uh, the most recent one came out uh, just uh, just yesterday, actually. It's on uh, Java FX on uh, Java 17. And the one that we're working on right now, I'm working on that with Frank Harkins, a colleague at IBM Quantum, and it's a Kizkit pocket guide. Uh, during this presentation, Brian and I, uh, Brian Ingmanson, uh, a colleague that you'll see in a little bit here, uh, are going to demonstrate uh, the quantum music playground and its reason for being, what the big idea is. Also, I'm going to show you a quick and dirty example uh, of, uh, of a composition uh, that was arranged with Quantum Music Playground. And then Brian is going to create some EDM beats, some electronic dance music beats with Quantum Music Playground. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add some Baroque music, a Baroque melody line uh, to Brian's EDM beats, specifically Pocket Bell's Canon, you know, the, the very familiar one. And then I'm going to play around uh, for a few minutes, uh, play around with things like uh, the quantum Fourier transform and how that then can be leveraged in, in creating quantum music. And then finally, I'm going to play a quantum music uh, playground composition uh, that was actually the product of a quantum music jam at the, at the new school in, in New York just recently, and Hassan Khalid and, and some, uh, some other people then that you'll see their names uh, when we play this. Uh, you'll see an actual uh, EDM progressive house composition. Um, and so before I really get into what the big idea is, I'd really like to thank Professor, Professor Eduardo Miranda uh, for both his camaraderie, camaraderie over the years in this quantum music space, but also for providing lots of creative input that helps shape quantum music playground. I remember uh, over the last couple of years, uh, last three years, uh, several discussions that we had, ideas that I would bounce off of a uh, professor and that he would then give me ideas on. And I'll point out some of those as, as I demonstrate. But the idea, the big idea, is that I wanted to ascertain a way to hear a quantum state. So that there's, there's thousands of ways, I'm sure, an infinite number of ways to, to take a quantum state and render it musically. And we've explored a lot of those during this conference already. And this is just another way. And this way is to take a quantum state and take its resultant state vector and then play that state vector. And one of the purposes for that, other than being a way to create music, 
is to help students of quantum computing uh, that would like to uh, challenge themselves musically to, uh, to gain intuition about state vectors, the circuits and the resultant state vectors. And so this is a screenshot from quantum, uh, the, uh, uh, the IBM Quantum Composer. And Brian is going to actually show you that. But this is a, a screenshot from that where we've got a circuit with four Hadamard gates and some other, uh, some phase gates. And the result of that is a state vector within an equal superposition of, of, uh, of 16 states, uh, 16 basis states. Um, and they're all equally likely to be selected. But what is different is their phases. Based because of these phase gates, we've got different phases that in quantum um, composer are rendered as different colors. And it looks a little bit like a toy xylophone that you may have had as a kid. And the idea then is to is that I created a plugin in a digital audio workstation named Ableton Live, that then we could put a circuit in, create a circuit, and then instead of rendering the state vector as, uh, as colors, I'm rendering it as pitches, or if it's an, uh, just a selection of instruments, it would be selecting the, the various instruments based upon the phase. Like for example, here's a zero phase, and here's a, 50, a pi, uh, uh, a uh, 15 uh, pi over eight rotation here on the right. So it's kind of zero to almost 360 degrees here. And based upon the phase then is what the, uh, the pitch would be. And so if I go over to live then, I'll go into this clip here, this scale clip, and I see this in the Quantum Music Playground plugin. I can select then out of all the clips that are in this particular piece, I can select the scale clip, and I can begin to create that circuit that we saw a second ago. Here I'll put four wires for qubits into equal superpositions and then I'll begin to change the phases here I'll put a Z gate which is a 180 degree uh, phase rotation on Q3 here I'll put an S gate which is a 90 degree rotation a T gate a T gate which is a 45 degree and then I'm going to go ahead and put another T gate but I'm going to change the rotation, decrease the rotation to about 22 and a half degrees or a pi over eight rotation. And so then we see that that's a result. Now, if I play that, uh, then I can get, uh, I can hear then. And so now we've got uh, the scale uh, playing as a result of a quantum circuit. So that's kind of the, the idea behind it. And Brian's gonna go into a lot more depth. Uh, here's an example. Let me go ahead and load this while I'm talking. I'm gonna go ahead and, and load an example composition. And this example was inspired by the music of Jean-Michel Jarre, who is one of the pioneers of, uh, of electronic dance music. And this is a view of Ableton Live in the arrangement view. So we've taken clips, each of these is a clip, and then we've arranged that into a song that I'm going to go ahead and play for you here. Here's the session view. Here's all the different clips. And here again is the Quantum Music Playground plugin that we can select these different clips and see them. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and go to arrangement view in which we've arranged those clips. 
and I'm going to go ahead and play this composition. And so that's uh, that's the the composition, kind of the quick and dirty uh, arrangement of, of of a song that uh, was inspired by the music of Jean Michel Jarre. Um, so now, what I'd like to do is ask Brian Ingmanson, a dear colleague at uh, IBM Quantum, who as who he'll introduce himself, but uh, he is not only a quantum expert, but he's also uh, has been a professional drummer. And so he's going to give you a deep dive into the workings of Quantum Music Playground from the perspective uh, of a percussionist. And he's going to create some, uh, some fire beats for you. And, uh, and then I'm going to come back and add some melodies to what he's created. Uh, so take it away, Brian. Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Ingmanson. I'm the Education Engagement Lead here at IBM Quantum, and I'm thrilled to be here to talk with you all about how to make some beats in the Quantum Music Playground. Now, just so you know, I'm not just a quantum expert here at IBM Quantum. I also uh, was a drummer in a former life and ran multiple different drum lines. So hopefully, by running through the expertise of percussion at the same time of the expertise of the Quantum Music Playground, I'll be able to show you how to use it to make some really fun things. We are going to be using both the IBM Quantum Composer here at quantum-computing.ibm.com, as well as Ableton Live 11, which you can get a free trial on. Now, many of you watching this have already followed along with James's tutorial on GitHub. So if you've done that already, you're in a great spot. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be using Ableton here to walk through some of the basics of the Quantum Music Playground. I already have Ableton set up with my Quantum Music Playground here in the first slot. A bass, a snare, hi-hat, clave, and congas there as well that we're going to be using. I'm going to turn my own video off here and just go ahead and follow along with what you're seeing on the screen. Okay. The first thing I want to do is show you how to make a very simple four-on-the-floor beat. And we're going to do that actually over in the Quantum Composer. Because as you've already seen, the Quantum Music Playground uses these circuits and the state vectors created from them to make our songs. You know already that the Quantum Music Composer is split into 16 different steps. And you've already seen how James has used that to create a scale. Uh, but we are going to use it a little bit differently. When you're using a percussion track, those 16 steps are your 16 beats, your, your 16th notes in one measure. So instead of this being different notes on a scale, this is now one E and a 
two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh. so that's our entire measure right there subdivided into 16th notes what i want to do as i've already said is start by making a very simple four on the floor beat so four on the floor i want my bass drum hitting on one two three four and i want my snare to clap on two and four so boom boom using our quantum music playground which you know our circuits here are going to be the exact same as they appear on the quantum music playground that means i need the bass drum to hit on one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. so those four state vectors need to be expressed zero 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 one one oh no i'm sorry zero one zero zero one zero 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 and one one zero zero okay so how do we make that happen using our hadamard gates here you've already seen that creating a superposition activates one of these notes to be played the state vector is what we're looking for so you can just tell by messing around deleting a hadamard here deleting a hadamard there you can change where the notes will be expressed so in this situation, I would play on one and two, three and. Okay, cool, good start, but not quite what we want. We want this to be playing on the downbeats. So what I'm gonna do is move my Hadamar gates to just qubit three and qubit two. You may already know this, but just in case you forgot, here in our Quantum Composer, we read our binary a little different. We read it left to right. So when I move my Hadamar gate down to qubit two, you see that just the correct uh, uh, state vectors are expressed. Zero, 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 like I said, zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. Okay, awesome. So if this is what we need to do to create our four beats on the floor, let me go back to Ableton and try that. So I've already loaded my clips in here to my quantum music playground. I have the bass drum selected, and I'm gonna do exactly that. Put my Hadamard on uh, qubit three and qubit two. And let's hear if I got it right. Uh oh, I forgot to turn my snare off for now. Boom. Okay, let's hear that now. One, two, three, four. Good. We're cooking here at 120 beats per minute. We want to get this beat moving fast. So uh, you can change that up here in the top left of Ableton. You could change your tempo up here. Let's now go back and look at how we can create that snare. So if I want my snare to just hit on two and four, well, there's a few different ways you could go about doing this. I think I'm gonna use a not gate to do this. So here's what I'm doing. Okay, so if I get rid of this Hadamard on qubit two, you can see I now am only hitting on beat one e and a two e and a three on beats one and three that's not quite what i want i want it on two and four if you hear someone clapping on one and three at the club or at the party you know that person is not a percussionist okay we understand if we're making a four on the floor beat we want those snare hits on the two and the four so i'm going to use my not gate here a not gate is a typical bit flip gate so i'm going to use this to switch one of these qubits from a zero, which is what it's initialized as, to a one. So I'm gonna pull that knot gate down to my qubit two, and now I have the perfect setup. Okay, so qubit two is always gonna be a one now. So here's qubit two as a one, here's qubit two again as a one. Qubit three is in superposition, which means it can be a zero or a one, as you can see expressed there. And then qubits zero and one are always going to be zero because we haven't done anything to them. So you can see over here, so a reason why uh, this one is not expressed is because this one appears where qubit zero would appear. So, okay, that's not what we want. I'm just breaking this down in case you're, you're still kind of catching up with how to use the quantum music playground. You're using a combination of these gates, the Hadamard, and eventually these phase gates to shift where the note is expressed. Going back to Ableton here, let's select our snare and let's make that happen. Right now, 
I'm going to put my Hadamard gate on qubit 3, as you saw in the composer, and my not gate on qubit 2. And you can see it shift over. Now, in real time, let me do that again. What you saw happen was it starts initialized with only four beats here, okay? Hmm. We know we want this to be subdivided into 16th notes. So wherever you put your highest gate, whatever place along your quantum music playground, you put your highest gate that you know is activating that state vector, that determines how many boxes are going to appear over here. So if I did qubit 2, I only go up to 8. If I go qubit 3, I go up to 16. And if I go qubit 4, oh, I go 32. OK, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But just so you know, that's how to expand this uh, area down here. So here I am. I have my Hadamard gate on qubit 3. I've got my not gate on qubit 2. Let's hear it all together. Let's turn the snare back on. OK, beautiful. That is an easy four on the floor beat, exactly what we want that to sound like. Next up, I want to put some hi-hats on this. And I want my hi-hats to actually, uh, you know, I want them to be pumping along. I want to hear 16th notes on my hi-hats. So down here, I'm going to select my hi-hats. And this is where I want to pause to point out how these instruments are initialized in the quantum music playground. When you create a new MIDI clip on one of your instruments here, uh, which you do by you know clicking within it, right-clicking and hit insert empty MIDI clip, and then you rename it to whatever you want. So when you do that, it initializes the instrument way down at the bottom. So bass drum is the, the zero on the scale. Rim shot is one, snare drum is two, hand clap is three, all the way up to claves being a 15. When it becomes initialized, they always initialize down at zero, which means the bass drum is always where they initialize. So in order to make this sound like what we want it to sound like, I'm going to select my phase shifter here. And I want this to be my hi-hats, right? So I'm going to drag this up. And you can see that blue square is also moving as I drag it all the way up to closed hi-hat. Then I'll go back to pitch, and that will lock that in place. So now, when I put different uh, Hadamard gates on here, you'll see we are getting the correct sound out of what we want. Let's hear that. Perfect. But I want a little bit more movement out of those hi-hats, OK? I, I like the 16th note, but I want to get a little open sound in there. So if you notice, our closed hi-hat is one, two, three, four spaces or four steps away, four rotations, you could call it, away from the open hi-hat. So what I'm going to do is use some of these light blue phase gates next. These phase gates are a way for us to rotate our sound. Now, you know if you're creating a pitch, um, a piano, say, you're using those phase gates to go from one note to another note. But here in the Quantum Music Playground, you're using those phase gates to go from one instrument to a totally different instrument. So I could go from my closed hi-hat all the way up to, let's see here, what happens if I put a, a Z gate on here? Suddenly I go from closed hi-hat to the cowbell. Not quite what we're looking for, but you can use those phase gates to create some really unique sounds. What I wanna do here is just use my S gate to move up to an open hi-hat, just like that. An S gate is going to rotate four steps or, or four rotations along that way. Now, I, I think that open hi-hat is open just a little bit too long. So I actually am going to use an S dagger gate to rotate it back. So I click on S dagger. I'm going to put that on my qubit zero to rotate it back down. And uh-oh. OK, now I've made a, a mess of what this is. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like that. But um, for the purpose of this tutorial, not quite where I want to land, right? I want that to be a nice, crisp, open hi-hat on the and notes, the upbeats, and closed hi-hat the whole rest of the way. 
This is where I'm going to utilize a control modifier. Now, you may have noticed when I hover over these different gates, the area over here, the info view, updates with information about what each of those gates does within the Quantum Music Playground. James, who created the Quantum Music Playground, has written in helpful text to let you know what each of these things, each of these gates or modifiers will do as you're writing your circuits. So this control modifier is going to be used to help us uh, uh, make a note appear exactly where we want it to appear, would be the uh, easiest way to say it. We can use it for syncopation later on, and we can use it to really granularly control where something is going to show up. As you can see from the helpful text over here, an X gate or a phase gate placed in the same column. OK, that's good to know. So here are our columns right within our quantum music playground. So a gate placed in the same column operates only when a binary basis state contains a one in the position corresponding in the control wire number. What's that mean? Well, here's our control wire, right? Qubit one, this is the wire. Qubit two, this is the wire. So this is saying when we use a control modifier, if I put it right here, that the S dagger rotation is only gonna be applied when this qubit one line has a one in the basis state. Okay, so you can use that to your advantage and you can see that's exactly what I just did here. I got my hi-hat sounded just like I want. All right, next up, I want to add some clave. I wanna add uh, a little bit more to that, okay? We have a nice snare on the twos and fours but I'm going to use my clave to add a little bit of a little bit of flair to that snare. So what I want is for the first measure, that clave is just going to be kind of hiding, hiding in plain sight. It's going to be hiding right behind the snare. But in the second measure, I'm going to have the clave pop out and do something different. Hmm. I'm talking about two different measures now. So how do we do that? If adding these Hadamard gates only subdivides this area even further, how are we actually going to make a two measure phrase? Well, that's the cool thing. The quantum music playground subdivides into 16th notes. So when I put my Hadamard on qubit three, I have my 16th notes right here, all 16 of them. When I put it on the next qubit, I now have 32 notes over here. So you might think, oh, I, I'm now subdividing into 30 second notes. You know, I'm really going to be pushing through this now. But that's not it. This is now 32 16th notes, or AKA, that's two measures of 16th notes. So by moving this Hadamard gate up, by activating a higher qubit, we are now adding a measure to our entire rotation here, to our, our beat. That's what I want to do. I want to have it so my first measure, which is this area of the quantum music playground, this has one thing. And the second measure, which is this area, you can see it's a little cut off because I'm so zoomed in. This will be playing something different. So I am going to add a Hadamard gate here to my qubit zero. And I'm going to use a control modifier once again to change how that is displayed. Uh oh. What did I forget to do? I forget to do this at least once every time I'm creating a beat. And I promise you will forget this too. So let this be your reminder. When you're trying to make a new sound, I want this to be my clave. Remember, go to your phase, your shifter, and shift that sound all the way up to what you want it to be. Boom, just like that. Now I go back to phase, lock it in, and turn off velocity because we don't need that right now. Uh, let's hear if I even did that correctly. Perfect. So you hear that clave sitting on the one, the three, the one E, and the three E of our now two measure phrase. I like that a lot. But as you heard before, no drummer in their right mind would be putting the clave on the one and three just like this. We want that bad boy on the two and four hiding behind the snare drum. So I'm going to use another X gate or not gate to flip my cube at two. And that is going to shift them over to the uh, twos and fours. So I want this to hide behind the snare to begin with and then come out in the second measure. Let's hear it.
Perfect. All right. So you see how you barely even noticed it right away and then it comes out of nowhere. I, I like that. I think it's starting to sound kind of unique. Next up, I'm going to put some Kungas in here. Now the Kungas, this is where I'm going to get uh, a little, a little weird with what I want to do. I'm going to be using a combination of a phase gate of Hadamard gates of control modifiers, anti-control modifiers, and I'm going to have this be another two bar phrase. So I'm going to start by putting a Hadamard on qubit two, three, and four. That gets me to my two bar phrase. And now I'm going to put a not gate on qubit zero and on qubit one. All right, so I'm going to go over to my phase, turn off velocity. I'm going to shift my phase up to the congas. And I want it to actually start, where do I want to start? I'll start on the mid conga. How about that? Let's hear what this sounds like just right now. Okay, I've got that on the uh of every beat. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh. Not sounding good yet. So let's start using those control modifiers here. And again, those activate our vertical columns based on what's happening within the wire they are placed. I'm gonna put one above each of these X gates. And yeah, okay, this is looking cool. Let's hear that. Okay, so in that second measure, let me actually, um, let me get rid of the hats and the snare. Uh, Listen to how the Kungas and the Clave interplay there. Very cool. Uh, a key to creating a good beat is to have some type of interplay going on between what you're putting in. Like, you want these different instruments to come together and be a sum greater than each individual part. If you think of something like uh, the song September by Earth, Wind and Fire, that's a very basic beat, but just because of how they layered everything on top of each other and how smooth it all feels, it comes to be a super groovy tune. That's what we wanna do here. We wanna layer these things on top of each other and really make them stand out at different segments while they come together to create something fun. So here we go with a few anti-control modifiers. And as you can read from our help section over here, those anti-control modifiers do something a little bit different. And you can see in this situation, my anti-control modifier is actually shifting the phase as well here. This is gonna sound cool. Let's hear just that. Let me solo my congas and hear just that. Okay, so I've used my control modifiers and those, uh, those bit flips to now have my first measure and my second measure. While they sound similar, they are different. Hear it again, they're, they're different. Here's the first. Okay, not quite there yet. What I wanna do is get a little more action. So I'm gonna use a phase gate on my third qubit line here. And that's going to rotate some of those notes up to the high congas. So now I've got a mid conga, high conga, and a tom, which I actually really like the sound of that all together. Let's hear all of this now. Let's put it with the, the whole beat. Let's hear everything together. All right, one last thing I want to do here, okay? I've got a great center to everything I've created. I want to add a little bit more action to my bass drum. I like that it's pumping like that, but we have a lot of movement in every other instrument here. I want to add some movement to that bass drum too and, and really get this beat moving. So what I'm going to do, instead of going back to my bass drum like this and adding in uh, you know, a really complicated circuit here, I am going to drag over an 808 core kit. I've been using 808 drums. And I'm going to create another instance of that instrument. 
you could do that. You're allowed to do that. You can do whatever you want when you're creating these. I'm gonna create an empty MIDI clip and I'm going to rename this my offbeat bass. Okay, so we'll activate that. Go back to my Quantum Music Playground. You can see it's not here yet because whenever you add a new instrument or you shift them around, you're gonna need to load your clips in. So I'm gonna click on load my clips in. And I want to get that offbeat bass showing up right over here. Boom. Now I've got it. So what I'm doing here is taking my four on the floor, which is what the, the our initial bass drum is doing. And I'm going to add some real weird syncopation on top of that. I want my bass drum to really charge through this entire piece. So I'm going to take a Hadamard, put it on qubit three and two. And what I want to make happen here, I'm actually going to make this just a, a one beat, or sorry, a one measure phrase. I'm not going to have it spread over two measures because we already have the, the clave and we have the congas doing different things, measure one and measure two. The bass, I want to keep consistent as it's plowing through. So from here, I'm going to add two more Hadamard gates and I'm going to add some bit flip gates here as well. You can see as I start getting close to the edge of my circuit composer here, it will automatically reshape itself and add more space to your circuit. So don't fear about running out of space to create whatever convoluted things you want to do to your qubits here. The more you move over, the more space will be created for you. Now I'm going to use these control modifiers once again to really chop up what these qubits are doing. And you may have heard the line, good artist copy, but great artist steal. Well, that is exactly what I'm doing here. This, uh, this qubit setup that I'm putting into place here, I have stolen directly from James, who created all of this stuff in the first place. This is a classic uh, trance you know, synth line that you would hear. Ba, 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 ba. You know, you hear that in... Uh, the Rihanna song, Love in a Hopeless Place, you hear that in tons of different, you know, club bangers. So we're using that exact same thing now on our bass drum. Let's hear just that. Okay, I really like this. Let's put everything together now, layering all on top. We have our first measure, our second measure. We've got one, two, three, four, five different instruments, but we're having two different different uh, uh, instances of the bass drum itself. So really we have six total. Let's hear them all together. All right, well, I love that. That sounds great. I, I hope you all do too. I hope you learned a little bit from this entire uh, tutorial here on how to create beats in the Quantum Music Playground. Once again, my name is Brian Ingmanson. It's been wonderful to talk with all of you today. Hopefully you get to create your own awesome beats. I would love to hear them. So please tag me on Twitter. If you do, I'm at Bingmanson or uh, submit them in whatever project you're working on and let us know. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Brian. Uh, awesome beats, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, what I'd like to do now is add some melodic touches to what you just created. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a fusion from 17th century and 18th century music, uh, specifically Paco Bell's Canon in D. Uh, with your very progressive EDM beats in this century. And so what I'm going to, to use for that is a piece, a part of this tutorial. If you go to uh, the, the link that I showed you before, there's a Quantum Music Playground tutorial in, in which you can go through lessons uh, and it has lots of videos and lots of examples of how you can learn about how to use Quantum Music Playground. And some of the things that, uh, that Brian told you are, are in here. 
And plus, of course, he added his own things. There's lots of different videos and things. And one of the videos is, is how to create uh, this mel melody to Taco Bell's Canon. And, uh, and you'll be able to see that. And that's, here's a screenshot of, of kind of in the midst of that. And here's a YouTube link that you'll see. And I'm going to do that live for you on top of what Brian just composed. So I'm going to go to Ableton Live. Here's Brian's composition, his different his beats, his up hats, his bongos, things like that. And I've added a clip here called Canon. And I'm looking now at that clip in Quantum Music Playground. And I'm going to go ahead and put a circuit in there. And I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put some Hadamard gates in there, like Brian showed you how to do. I'm going to put three Hadamard gates in here, get things in a nice equal superposition, at least in some of the qubits. And then I'm going to add some gates here. Like, for example, I'm going to put uh, a gate that has a 13 pi over 8 rotation in it here and um, I'm going to instead of using kits like Brian did I'm going to choose an octave maybe octave two here and so we'll see that the the notes the pitches that are rendered are going to be in the range of C2 through D4 and since it's Paco Bell's canon, that was written in D, I'm going to go ahead and press, uh, change the, the transpose here to where the, the range, it's going to be in the key of D, and the range is going to be between D2 and E4. And then I'll go ahead and start playing this. Go ahead and start this. And you'll hear Brian's beats as well as... So I'll just start adding some gates here. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the phase here. I'm going to adjust the global phase to where the first note starts on D3. I'll turn the volume up a little bit here. And you, you kind of hear a melody start to emerge. And what we're doing is we're taking from an equal superposition, we're, we're kind of coercing the qubits, we're torturing the qubits into doing a melody that, a melody that we want. And I think the, the, the idea, the, the, the philosophy that I'd like to use uh, moving forward is the idea that I don't want to coerce the qubits too much. I want the I want my comp compositions to sound uh, what would naturally come out of a Hilbert space, uh, and then maybe tweaking them a bit so that uh, so that we're kind of uh, co-creating this thing. Uh, me and the Hilbert space, right? Uh, me, I'm, I'm taking what comes naturally and then tweaking it into the way I want it to sound. So I'm going to change the, the view here a little bit so that we can see the entire uh, state vector. So I'm going to go to look here. Things will get a little bit smaller here, but I want you to be able to see the entire state vector here over on the right. Uh, one thing I want to do is put legato on over here so that we hear these notes a little longer. Now, it doesn't sound like Paco Bell's canon yet because uh, we need to change some of the pitches over in the second half of the state vector. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a control 
uh, cubit here on cubit 5. And then that will control the T gate here to where the T gate only is only active when uh, Q5, that most significant bit qubit, is high, which is what we, which is why we saw some of these change over here. And we're almost there, but I'm going to go ahead and add another gate over here, S gate, being controlled by qubits four and five. So now it sounds like Pachelbel's canon. The, the melody anyway. But now I want to add some chords to it. First I'm going to do some arpeggiated chords. So I'm going to put a couple H gates here. And then I'll cause those to change in pitch here. And now I'm going to hit the quantize button over here, which is going to, in this case, cause every four notes to be played at the same time. Now we've got some minor seven things going on here, some major seven, minor seven things. And that's because I need to go ahead and add another gate here to cause this high note of each chord uh, to be raised a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to add a one pi over, uh, six, uh, over eight rotation here. But I'm gonna make that conditional upon qubit two. So now we hear Pachelbel's canon harmonically rendered. And now I'm going to go ahead and take quantize off. So now that we have that as a base, I'm just going to go ahead and play around a little bit, actually. Uh, here I'm going to go, instead of a minor scale, I'm going to, or a major scale, I'm going to go to a minor scale. And I can slow it down by moving all of these gates down one, which will double the amount of time that it takes to render all of these. Or I could speed it up by, by two. Another cool feature that I added uh, to be able to do Indian classical music was the ability to have different cycles. And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, the inner cycle to seven beats, essentially putting this into seven four time. Sounds kind of neat, especially since Brian's beats haven't changed. They're still in 4-4 four, four time. And so we, how we have this kind of uh, fluid center, fluid beat center happening. But we don't want to disturb uh, Johann Paco Bell too much, so we're going to go ahead and put this in, in regular time here. And uh, now the next thing I want to play with is I'm going to demonstrate a quantum Fourier transform. And you probably know uh, about uh, Fourier transforms and fast Fourier transforms. Uh, they change from the, the, the time basis to the, the frequency basis. And with quantum Fourier transform, it's a similar thing. And QFTs, as they're called, are a basis of many quantum algorithms. And I'm going to leverage that in Quantum Music Playground uh, to be able to then render some nice effects musically. And so 
I've got this quantum uh, QFT clip here that I've already added. And I'm going to select that in Quantum Music Playground. And it's empty. So I'm going to do the, the prerequisite of things. I'm going to move my octave maybe to three. And I'm not going to transpose this one because it's not in a particular key. And um, let me put uh, let me put some QFT gates here. The QFT uh, gate would be just a, basically a, a, a complex set of gates, especially when you um, when you put them in adjacent qubits, adjacent wires, because they combine to make much more complex. Uh, QFT circuits. And so maybe I'll put uh, I'll put seven in a row here and notice that the resultant state vector is is all zero phase. but when I start to interject, you know start to change the input state to those QFTs and let me go ahead and actually start the music here. So that's what it sounds like of course. But then when I start to interject X gates into the input states, start to get a neat effect. As a matter of fact, uh, if, I, if I quantize here and legato, bring that down an octave. I think I'd like it down a, an octave lower. Now the fact that the range is from C2 to D4, the, the, uh, the, the tonal center kind of floats. And so I, I put a button over here called folded, which folds it all into one octave. The tonal center doesn't float that way. It's all kind of in C. It all sounds good in C. Have some suspended chords and things. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this middle QFT. So now I have two independent quantum Fourier transform circuits here. And this is the result. We get a nice little pause here between these two. And so now I'm going to show uh, the final feature that I wanted to show during this presentation, and that's this stochastic button. When I was creating Quantum Music Playground, Professor Miranda said, well, you know, that all seems to be pretty deterministic, right? You're you're just setting up a state vector and it's all deterministic. It's playing exactly what you told it to play as a result of the circuit that you're creating. Um, and he said, we, we really need some, uh, uh, some, some stochastic kind of measurement effects, right? The quantum measurement kind of thing. Uh, you need to put at least a little bit of that into quantum music playground. And so, uh, we discussed it and said, you know, the uh, maybe a good idea would be to take the resultant state vector and then for each beat that's going to be played, each thing that, that has any uh, probability at all of being uh, the result of a measurement, um, then each for each one of those, go ahead and sample the probability, right? Do a, do a full measurement on the the full state vector, and then see what come see what comes out, and that's what you should play in this stochastic mode. And so this is the result. Then, if I hit the stochastic button, we see in green now the results of those measurements. Each one of these measurements, and then when I hit stochastic again. 
then we have a different melody. And so you can lose yourself, you can lose a whole afternoon just playing with this, with uh, the features of Quantum Music Playground. Um, as a performer, as a musician, uh, I guarantee you that uh, that you kind of can really get engrossed and 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 create things that sound good to you, and then just kind of get lost for the afternoon. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, what I'd like to do then uh, to to kind of close up is I'd like to show uh, a, a composition that was created by Hassan. Hassan Khalid and uh, some other folks on his team. Uh, his company is Algori Algorithm Music. Uh, he releases uh, 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 EDM, mostly uh, tracks on 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 uh, Spotify, etc. Um, and uh, but he was involved in this quantum music jam uh, at uh, the New School in New York in which uh, these participants as well, and, as well as Hassan collaborated on this piece called Hope. And I wanted to play this with, uh, for you at the end and just show you that, uh, show you a, a, a piece that's out there in the wild uh, that was created with Quantum Music Playground. I'm really happy with the way that, uh, that it turned out and uh, kudos to Hassan and company.